This is my game Partisan, an immersive sim FPS similar to Half-Life and Deus Ex with fast-paced combat and retro graphics. Now, in my last video, I remade a good 50% of the game. From the movement, to the AI, to the weapons, a lot of the game's code is refactored to make it a lot easier to work with and so that I could finally start working on levels. But, like always, I'm pretty rough and stupid, so I haven't really got in there yet. I realized that there's still a long ways to go before I could get into level and content creation, but with that being said, with this devlog, I'm getting pretty close. After the last devlog, I packed my bags and moved over to Toronto to start university. I was really nervous. I'm starting mechatronics engineering, so I know I have a long hellish road ahead of me. And moving from home, not only am I living on my own for the first time ever, I'm also leaving a lot of my hometown friends behind, which, while kind of scary, I was also super excited to meet a lot of new people and make a lot of new friends. So as soon as I moved in, I closed the door, shut my blinds, and got to work finishing up the raccoon. I made new animations and remade the raccoon's AI with the fancy new state machine that I set up in my last video, I could easily set up the SNES behavior, where the raccoon first patrols around, then if he can sneak up on you or an enemy, he'll grab your gun and return it to his nest. Very adorable and really, really annoying. Anyways, after finishing up the raccoon, I wanted to make a status effect system. I already had fire in the game, and I wanted to clean up how it was being applied. So now, I have a system where you could apply status effect groups, which contain multiple status effects. For example, the fire group has a damage effect and a particle system effect, damaging whatever it's being applied to and instantiating a fire particle system. The best part is that it's super modular. I just have generic apply, update, and remove status effect functions making it easy to add new effects in the future. This was all in preparation for a new type of grenade, the GHEG. -E Check out this cool volumetric chromatic aberration shader that I made for the gravity bubble. It's mostly just a fog shader that I made in previous video, but instead of setting it to some fog color, I set it to the current screen color with offset red, green, and blue channels, then I just added warp to it. Overall, the GHG is a lot of fun to play with. Not only does it feel great to fight enemies with, it's also a lot of fun using it on yourself. Combining it with diving or grappling, there's a lot of cool movement stuff that you can do. I plan on adding a lot more weird weapons like this in the future instead of just weapons that shoot. So if you want to see more weird weapons like the GHG, smash that subscribe button. And wishlist partisan on Steam, maybe. Something. But anyways, after finishing up the GHG, I started working on a new level, which you can see parts of in my last video. I based parts of the level off of clips of Strafdat, a small FPS game I follow on Twitter. I really like the varying heights that Mr. Sears uses, and brought a lot of that to Partizan. Though, after blocking out the basic layout, I found that the cover picking system sucked major butt. Enemies would rarely move in interesting ways, and I found that I had barely any control over how cover was chosen. The system worked by using a brute force approach. At runtime, it would pick a random spot in the nav mesh, check if it was a valid cover position, then if it wasn't, it would just pick another random spot in the nav mesh and check again. For obvious reasons, this is really fucking stupid. So when making a new system, I wanted to go completely in the other direction of my old system. So while my old system did everything at runtime, had very little offer control and sucked major butt, I wanted my new system to bake everything ahead of time, have high offer control and blow minor butt. So first, I just spent a while thinking about how I was gonna do all this, until I stumbled upon the holy grail of GDC talks, Uncharted 4's systemic versus offered enemy design. Most of the talk is filled with pretty high level concepts about enemy design. But a key takeaway for me was that the Uncharted team initially tried to make all enemy placements generate a runtime. But in order to create fun and varied challenges for the player, they had to move over to a far more offered approach, where level designers would manually zone enemies during level creation. And while there isn't a lot of info on how they generate their placements, their posts, there is a lot of info on what they do with the posts after. After generating the posts, they have a class containing a whole bunch of parameters containing costs, which are then used to determine what post a post user prefers cheaper ones being favored over expensive ones. These costs then affect how a post user acts. For example, if you wanted a defensive versus an aggressive enemy, 
you could adjust the post to target cost, making it low for the defensive enemy, meaning they're okay with staying further back, and making it high for the aggressive enemy, making it so that posts closer to the target are cheaper and therefore favored. On top of all this, your posts are highly offered, so if enemy behavior isn't what the level designer called for, they could manually adjust post positions for each level, making each fight feel fun and unique. Anyways, to get started implementing a system like this, the first step is to figure out how to generate the initial posts. While the system should be highly offered, I don't want to manually place each and every post, so the initial generation should cover around 90% of situations. I first start off by reading the mesh data from the nav mesh. Luckily, my GOAT, Erringenberg, last name Pathfinding Project, already provides that. And to get this into something usable for cover posts, I first find all the edge loops on the mesh. This is useful as cover will always be on one of these edges. Then I just step along the loop at some interval and check if the position could be used as a cover post. If it can be, then I save it to disk. Then at runtime, I have a post handler that enemies can call to in order to get an unoccupied post with the lowest cost. The cost parameters I have right now are distance to post, making closer posts favored, distance to target, making posts closer to the target favored, occupation cost, making sure that posts aren't overcrowded. Can see target cost, making sure that there's cover between the post and the target. Can see target above cover cost, making sure that you can hit the target from cover. And lastly, a board cost, which multiplies with how long a post user has been at a post so that enemies are always moving around. All in all, the post generation system and these parameters allow me to create a wide variety of enemy types and combat scenarios. And I'm really excited to see what I could come up with in the level design stage. At this point in development, I was starting exams. I swear that the reason I can't keep up with any sort of like consistent upload schedule, it's just life gets in the way. Since the last video, I was working a full-time internship and right after my work term ended, I started university. Maybe one day I'll be, um, you know, free from responsibility or maybe I'll have better time management and I'll stop drinking. Anyways, after finishing up the post system, I thought it'd be cool to make a flying type enemy. Nothing like a man hack though, that, that would be dumb. So I eventually created this. It's a custom 3D pathfinding system. I'm not even sure if the manhacks in Half-Life even have pathfinding. I think they're just highly scripted and bounce off of walls. But that doesn't matter because I'm not um I'm not making a manhack. Anyways, to make 3D pathfinding, I first generate a 3D grid of points, and then generate points along every wall intersection between those points. And finally, I just use an A-star pathfinding algorithm to find the path between said points. That being said, there's a lot more that goes into it, but I don't want to bore you with more AI point generation. So after finishing that up, I made the first flying enemy, the spawn. The spar should add a lot more combat variety, as you have to look in all directions instead of just at the ground. And in the future, I plan on making it able to carry a gun instead of just being able to ram into you, which should add even more combat variety. After finishing up the spar, I got kind of bored working on important stuff, so I thought it'd be cool to make the gravity pad from Prey. It shouldn't really be that hard anyway, so as all you have to do is change the gravity direction and rotate the player to... Oh. Fuck. Okay, time to delete units straight ass player control at a capsule collide. Spend five hours looking at character controller resources, only to find out that most of them are incomplete, made of spaghetti, or just don't fucking work. Spend three days learning how to do everything yourself. Collide and slide loop. Oh wait, now it's sliding down when gravity is applied on the slope. Negate that. Oh wait, now you can't go down the slope. And a bench. Oh wait, now when you're sliding up against the wall, you can't slide up it. And a bench. Add a recursive loop so the player doesn't get stuck inside a wall. And check it out. Pretty cool, right? After like two weeks, I finished writing my own character controller, since Unity's character controller can't be rotated on the XZ axis for some reason. Thanks, Unity. It's all done now. The player can do cool Super Mario Galaxy stuff and walk on walls and roofs. Though, I don't even know when I'm going to use any of this. Um, probably like way later into level making, but it just really bugged me that I couldn't rotate characters on the XZ axis. And I've got goopy developer brain, which makes me want to die when a component doesn't work the way I want it to. So, uh, consider it necessary. Finally, after finishing up my character controller, I worked on something I should have done way earlier in development. 
a mission system. I can now finally, finally add player objectives. And I have a very neat way of setting them up. When making a new mission, I just have a name and a list of requirements that need to be completed. Each of these requirements then have a list of events that need to be triggered in order for them to be completed. That's where my new event system comes in. Events are just stored in strings, which could get very messy. So I keep all my events in a scriptable object that I later pick from using a custom attribute. I have a list of global and level events, which later get combined. So that events like button presses and levers don't need to be defined in each level and so that level specific events don't show up in other levels so i don't have a thousand line list of events to pick from anyways this is super flexible and now i could easily set up missions like kill this guy or you know um go apple picking on top of the mission system i also finally have a dialogue system i use inky which is a super flexible story scripting language letting me easily set up branching dialogue choices i can also call functions from it like starting missions and whatnot which makes it super flexible. This should open a ton of possibilities in mission structure. In the future, I can imagine Dishonored-esque levels where you have a main objective, then throughout the level, you have a dozen or so side objectives, like a dude who wants you to go apple picking, which like, maybe you don't want to help him, but it makes the world feel a lot more alive. Anyways, that's six more months of work. I, uh, I hope it was worth the wait. Thank you so, so much to all my patrons, everyone who subscribed, and everyone who wishlisted Partisan. And if you haven't wishlisted or subscribed yet, please do so. It's free and it helps me out a ton. Oh, also like, comment, uh, share, um, tell your mom about this video, tell your, your dad about this video, tell your dog about this video. Um, I'll fucking tell your mom myself, I guess, like whatever. And if you're interested in supporting me or Partisan with money, like I said, I've got a Patreon. There's parts of the project on there and some cool perks, so check that out. Uh, but yeah, links for everything in the description. I've been meaning to mess around with new content, uh, you know, content that doesn't take me six months to make every time. Maybe um, like smaller updates or commentary videos. I don't know. Let me know if you guys would be interested in uh, knowing what what this uh, goopy developer brain has to think. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. See ya. Wouldn't it be so cool? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be so cool if we got this in one take? Hey, Thomas? Hey. Hey. <laughs>